Hello everybody, my name is Kamal Chaudhary. I'm a research scientist at NIST. Today I'm going to talk about how we can find new 2D topological materials using spin orbit spillage method. This project is a part of Materials Genome Initiative. Specifically, this project is called Jarvis, which is available at jarvis.nist.gov. The motivation behind this project is definitely the Materials Genome Initiative, which uh, pushes on accelerated material design using computational as well as experimental techniques. This quantum materials or 2D topological materials can be used for fault tolerant quantum computing as a good candidates of materials and that can be used for topological quantum computers. As a physicist, it can be also interesting for finding magnetic monopole, Mariana fermion and so on. So before I go in the details. Uh, there are three main components Jarvis density functional theory, Jarvis force field, Jarvis machine learning, Jarvis STM, Jarvis tools, and so on available publicly. There are 45,000 bulk materials and 1,000 2D materials in our data sets, and around 110 classical force field from molecular dynamics, and all of them are publicly available. You can see that in the last three, four years, we have published several papers. And today, specifically, I'll be talking about the 2D topological material paper. Jarvis has been used throughout the globe, and especially in US and China, based on this Google Analytics view. And again, the website for Jarvis is jarvis.nist.gov. The tools for this work is available at usnist.gov slash Jarvis. Based on the Google uh, IP analytics, we can see that it's uh, around 81,000 down downloaded. And in Fixture, we distribute our data on Fixture also, so you can see there, we our data is well downloaded from there as well. So Jarvis density functional theory is a quantum mechanical density functional theory based database, and which is available at jarvis.nist.gov slash jarvis tft. It has very, it has several kind of prop material properties such as crystal structure, formation energy, to solar cell efficiency, topological spillage, one year tide binding Hamiltonian. STM images of 2D material, electric field gradient, and so on. Today, I will be focusing on topological seminar spillage for topological materials only. So when I say topological materials, I'll give a brief background. Based on the band gap, a material can be classified into metal, semiconductor, and insulator. However, um, in recently, it was proposed that there can be a topological phase. And for example, in bismuth selenide, there can be both conducting as well as the uh, insulating phases. So the surface can be conducting but the bulk can be insulating. So this idea can be used for topological material design and which is characterized by the band inversions which is generally responsible because of the spin orbit coupling. Uh, so you can see in the figure here that uh, a regular insulator the conduction band is red and the valence band is blue but as we have topological insulator the bands are inverted that is the blue character is on the conduction band and red character of conduction band is the valence band so i want you to remember this point so uh, the when we say topology basically uh, we use our homomorphic transformation in topology uh, in that respect the bagel a bagel and a coffee cup are the same why because they're only one hole so uh, to extend this more I like to show what is spillage is. So spillage definitely means when you have a container such as a coffee cup and you have pour more coffee than that, that particular phenomenon is spilling and it also can be viewed in electronic band structure where we have electronic wave function with and without spin orbit coupling and the difference between them is the spillage that can be used for finding whether bands are inverted due to spin orbit coupling or not. So as I said, spin orbit coupling uh, is one of is one of the best way to find uh, topological materials, but there are other methods as well, such as symmetry indicator methods and so on. This method, the spin orbit image was actually proposed by David Vanderbilt group for topological insulator, but now we have extended it for topological semi-metals for both magnetic and non-magnetic systems. So the idea is actually very simple. We are use compare wave functions with and without spin orbit coupling, and then we use the uh, k-dependent occupied orbitals and then calculate spillage based as based on this formulation, uh, and we have the uh, 
uh, wave function from both spin orbit and non spin orbit calculations. So, using this idea, we are applying this for 3D materials. We had found 1800 high spillage materials, and uh, one of them were bismuth selenide. So, on the right hand side, I show an example uh, for bismuth selenide. So, you can see on the left hand side is a non spin orbit band structure, and the right hand side is a spin orbit band structure. So, on the left hand side, the red dots basically shows the unoccupied bands and the green as the occupied bands but as you turn on spin orbit coupling you can see that the red character of the conduction band is shown in the valence band and the green character of the valence band is shown in the uh, conduction band so this is a phenomenon for uh, band inversion which can be again captured in the figure e here topological spillage so this is can be uh, a fractional number for metals for example or it can be integers representing the number of band inverted electrons here are a few examples of topological spillage for some of the most commonly known topological materials such as bismuth selenide which I explained but it can be used for Dirac semi-metal, uh, white semi-metal as such as molydactylerite, topological crystal insulator and tintilloid and so on. Using this topological spin orbit spillage method, we have found several uh, high spillage 3D non-magnetic material as well as the uh, 3D magnetic materials. Uh, however, today I'm not going to talk about the magnetic systems, 3D magnetic system. Instead, I'll be talking about the 2D magnetic and non-magnetic systems. So we have around 1000 2D material database. So we chose only less than 1.5 EB materials, which are exfoliable. And we found uh, which of these materials had high spillage more than 0.5. If it's a, a material with high magnetic moment, we, uh, we do several sub calculations such as the bulk and edge band structure z2 and uh, the churn number calculation anomalous hull conductive calculation and so on to classify them so their work is published in the npj computational material science journal you can find more details there so this is a statistical overview of the 2d topological materials you can see based using 0.5 topological spillage we can classify or discard several materials which have which are not candidate for topological materials we have several band gap and several magnetic moment materials also as you can see from the figure b and figure c we have several prototypes not just in mos2 or ab2 type but several other types of 2d materials as well these are favored by high symmetry and on the figure f we saw the bulk and monolayer spillage so as obvious uh, as we have less number of atoms we will have less number of spillage in monolayers. Here is an example of 2D quantum spin hole insulator. So the quantum spin hole insulator are characterized by uh, insulating <coughs> uh, surface band structure but conducting edge states. So for example, in bismuth selenide, we talked about the 3D bulk material, which is, which is a 3D bulk material. The bulk was insulating and the surfaces are conducting. Here in 2D, materials in 2D quantum spin hole insulator at least the surface is actually insulating figure B and edges in figure C are conducting so this is a example of quantum spin hole insulators which is again can be captured from the Z2 numbers as well and some other example of quantum spin hole insulator that we found are bismuth telluride iodide and hafnium telluride we also found quantum anomalous hull insulators so these are uh, characterized by the broken time reversal symmetry and which have gapped surface state but the edge states are conducting and which are also characterized by the uh, zero field or anomalous hull conductivity which is again uh, calculated from the Berry curvature. We, we can also find several magnetic and non-magnetic semi-metal so example of titanium tellurium phosphide and titanium chloride which are non-magnetic and magnetic same metal respectively and we find the nodes using the one year based calculations but it was actually initially characterized by the uh, topological spillage only after finding the topological materials we did magnetic ordering calculation using this heisenberg model and we found that most of the topological materials we found had above liquid nitrogen temperature which is very good for uh, technological applications as we are using Conventional density functional theory with PBE with PB spin orbit coupling, we have a problem of underestimating the band gap. However, we can see that some of the materials such as zirconium iron chloride 
loses their churn number as we increase the DFT plus U and U parameter. But some of them, such as vanadium, silver, phosphorus, selenide, still had a band gap, uh, reasonable enough, and had uh, churn number with the GW plus min orbit coupling as well, so which is promising. So in summary, I have showed you the spillage can be used as a simple and powerful technique for finding topological materials for both defect and perfect system. The database is available at Jarvis NIST.gov, especially Jarvis TFT. You can find more details uh, on our two of our papers, and I'll be happy to answer any question if you have through email or, or so. Thank you.